All right, I'm back. <laughs> Have to deal with a phone call. So I forgot where we were, other than the fact I know we are on the growing equity mortgage. A growing equity mortgage, sometimes called a rapid payoff. Now, to me, my honest opinion, if you're one of those young people, it's IMO, in my opinion. This is actually the dumbest loan there is, okay? Because let's talk about it. Remember, we had just talked about changing the length of the time actually changes the lowers the payment but what it also does is it increases the amount of total interest so a growing equity mortgage is something where you've got this scenario and remember under a level payment loan that we had we had this and the example that we had given way back at the beginning of this course is you borrowed 100k and by the time you paid it off, you paid off another 100K. Remember that um, example that I showed you for my note at the very beginning? I borrowed 100,000 at 5.31%. I pay back a total of 200,000. 100 in the principal that I borrowed and 100 in interest. What a growing equity mortgage is, is a scheduled increase in the monthly payments. So now it is not level like we have been talking about of 750 every month. A growing equity or a rapid payoff is a scheduled increase of the monthly payments. So what you see is your monthly payments go like this. Maybe it's $750 the first year, then it goes to eight and a quarter and then 900 and then 1100. The theory is what happens is you end up paying off that loan in a shorter time frame. And I'm making this number up like 22 years instead of this fully amortized of 30 years. You've made up eight years because you have paid more and more principal each month. It's growing equity. Now, the curve looks like this. If you are a math major, you would see that the area in the principal is still a hundred grand. You still pay back that initial hundred grand that you borrowed, but the amount of interest is lower. Now, I am not going to do the math and don't worry about it, but just understand that whatever this amount of interest is here, it is going to be less than that hundred grand of interest that you'd have paid here you pay less interest. The reason I think this is a stupid loan is because it is a required increase in the monthly payments. If something happens out in here and you can't make that new increased payment, you could be in jeopardy of a foreclosure. What you could do is, this is what most people do, is stick with this level loan where you budget $750 every month, then if something happens, you can actually add more money to that payment. Hey, I had a good year. So instead of 750, I paid the 750, but then I added $50 every month to that house payment and it will pay it off faster because you're paying more to the principal. If something would happen and you have a bad year, you're, you fall back down to, well, at least it's still back down to 750 and not like this 850 over here that I can't pay because I had a bad year. So I really don't like these loans. And often you might hear these loans called a doctor loan. And the reason they call these in the doctor loan is because doctors typically have a huge increase in their payments, or I'm sorry, I misspoke they have a huge increase in their income as they get out of college. You know, the first year they're making 200 grand, then all of a sudden they're making 300, 400, 550, 700 professional engineers, attorneys. They call them doctor's loans, but they could be used for anybody whose income substantially increases really quick to the point where this isn't gonna be a problem. What you should do is just stick with your regular level loan or your amortized loan and just add more money to it. That's smarter to me. 
We have talked about that balloon loan. That's when the final payment is larger than the monthly payments. And on an interest only loan, that is typically one of the examples. There is another loan that's kind of new and we're not going to debate whether it's a good loan or a bad loan. And you hear people say, well, it's a bad loan. It's actually not a bad loan from a concept. Why it's gotten a bad rap is because there are a lot of unscrupulous lenders that are taking advantage of people because to even qualify, they have to be an older person, have to be age 62 or more, all right? But the concept of the loan actually in general is a pretty smart idea. Basically what's happening is as a homeowner, you are selling the equity back to the lender, all right? So a good example would be, let's say somebody's 62 or three years old and they have this much loan left on their property. Well, the difference here, what's this called? That is called equity, right? Equity is the amount that represents the loan that's paid off. Equity is the difference between the value in the property and the outstanding loan. That is equity. So if a person that has been living in their house several years, 10, 20, 5, whatever, now has a smaller loan amount right here and a huge equity, but now they have retired or they have lost their spouse, what happens is, is they sell this loan or sell this equity back to the bank. So at some point, they now only have this amount of equity and this amount of loan. But what has happened in these months or years that this has happened, instead of paying a house payment, they actually receive money. We looked at this for my mother when my father passed away, and it was going to be a huge difference in her fixed income because she was in this position and my brother and I would have inherited that amount of equity should she have passed away. But she had a $444 a month house payment. What she did or what we looked into was selling this equity back. And instead of her paying $444 a month, the bank was going to pay her $500 a month to buy back this amount of equity that she had in the house. It was like a $900 swing for her from going to paying out 400 to getting back 500. The only difference being was that when she would have eventually passed away here, there just would have been less equity in the home. And that when my brother and I go to sell it, now we've got this little bit of equity versus this little bit. And there's probably not a child in the world that would ever begrudge their parents to be comfortable. This is literally what we looked at. It is a good concept of loan because this person has an asset. That asset's equity. Why not divest themselves of this asset so that they could live on a monthly basis? Now, what eventually happened was my mother did it the right way. <laughs> Her uncle passed away and left her a six-digit inheritance, and we didn't have to worry about it any longer. So didn't we didn't actually pull the trigger on this. We didn't have to. But the reverse loan basically is selling back equity to the bank, and the bank never takes ownership, all right? There's a whole bunch of questions. People go, well, what happens at the end of the 30 years? Does she lose the house? No. Remember, it's an interest in the property. They just have a bigger interest. Here, as an example, maybe she only had 10% left to pay on her loan. Here, now she's got 80%. But the house is still worth money. So when she passes away, you sell it for the value and you keep the equity. You just pay a bigger loan off. All right. 
So that is called the reverse mortgage. And it, there are a whole bunch of qualifications. This is one that I would definitely advocate you call somebody who is a specialist in reverse mortgages. So let's talk about the next situation. Let's go back over here and look at something I tried to draw a little more better, a little more better. Remember, the bank's going to loan you money and you're going to sign those two documents in the lien theory. And you are supposed to pay back all of that money. Now, let's say that in my infinite wisdom, I said, uh, you know what? I am supposed to get 19 months free. And the bank goes, uh, no, you don't. According to this IOU that you signed right here, it says that you're going to pay me monthly payments. And I'm like, eh, that's not how I read it. So who is the only person? So we argue. So the bank says no every month. And I'm like, no, 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 I think I get 19 months free. So who is the only person that can read a contract and tell you what it really says? Now, most of you first thought go, attorney. Well, that's not correct because my attorney is going to read it different than your attorney. The only person that can really read a contract and tell you what it says is a judge. So what happens is in that lean theory system, when we disagree on those monthly payments, we go in front of a judge and it's called a judicial foreclosure. And the judge is going to go, oh, uh, Raymond, you are supposed to pay every month. You are now in violation of the IOU and you lose. That court has a very special name. It is called foreclosure court. That's literally what this is. Now, people all the time say this. This is another misnomer. Foreclosure actually takes about this long. Guilty. Prior to that, I'm in pre-foreclosure because the judge hasn't ruled yet. So what happens is you go to the pre-foreclosure hearing and the judge says, no, Raymond, you're wrong. You were not supposed to not pay for 19 months. You are there now in default of the loan and you lose foreclosed upon, pay them that outstanding $97,000 that you owe. And you go, well, judge, I uh, don't really have the money on me. And he's like, oh, okay. Then give them the collateral that you promised for the loan. This is how the bank ends up with the house because there is collateral and you owe them the money, but you can't pay them, so you give them the house. So when people go, well, I lost the house in foreclosure. Actually, you lost the foreclosure judgment against you for $97,750, or $99,750, couldn't pay it, and now you gotta give them the house. Theoretically, if the judge says, you lose, pay them, and you reached into your pocket and pulled out, oh yeah, here, I happen to have $99,750 and paid them, you would keep the house because it's the judgment of the money the bank wants. Banks don't want your house. That is just problems for them. They actually want their money back. So you can't give it to them, so they take the collateral. Now, in some cases, 